my name is Dulcy Ronyar. I am an independent journalist and documentary photographer based in Kathmandu. I mostly cover topics which are close to environment, climate change, wildlife conservation, and social issues from the rural communities of Nepal. I'm based in Kathmandu currently, but I belong to the flatlands of the southern part of Nepal. And while growing up, I realized the narratives of the women from that region were basically absent from the mainstream media. And I thought I could use journalism and documentary photography as a tool to tell these stories to a larger audience. When the pandemic hit in early 2020 in Nepal, that's where you could see changes happening in the way people were doing things. And touch was a really big thing then. People were taking a lot of precautions in how they wanted to avoid the virus and avoid physical touch. And that's when I think eSeva, PhonePay, and all these online payment transactions, they took the lead and they promoted themselves as something that could, you know, exclude that touch from transactions that were happening. My name is Professor Jay Zagorski, and I teach at the Questrom School of Business at Boston University. So much of the world is actually going digital quite quickly. There's wide differences in countries around the world, and part of the differences are due to national laws. Some countries are really pushing very hard for digital banking. Other countries aren't. The digital economy, it rests on three key assumptions. The first is electricity. The second is communications, and the third are computers. And these assumptions are electricity runs all the time, communications is safe and secure, and the computers, they work. Imagine you live in a place where there's no access to drinking water, there is no electricity, there is no bridges, the roads are gravelly and perilous and you look across and there's a deep gorge and it's not safe. There's lack of internet connectivity, there is no electricity for you to charge your phones or for you to even have a phone to make a call to a loved one, right? In that situation, life is obviously difficult for you. Life is challenging because you do not have those resources and you rely on age-old traditional um, behaviors and habits. For many of the developing world, people have been moving from rural areas to urban areas or even migrating to other countries. But not our entire families haven't left with them. Many times it's maybe the primary breadwinner has left and the question is, how do they get money back home to their children, to their parents, to their spouses? So with digital banking, it becomes much easier. Instead of visiting back home once a year and bringing a lot of money, they can send money every week or every two weeks, depending exactly when they get paid. Another positive of digital banking is that there are very few banks in rural areas. And that means many people, when they need to borrow money, have to go to the local money lender. Money lenders oftentimes have very high rates because there's no competition. By having digital banking, this enables rates to come down because there's more competition, making things cheaper for farmers who need to say purchase seed or fertilizer on credit, or people in handicrafts who need to purchase supplies such as yarn ahead of time before they get paid, or even small business people. If I were to compare how it was for me two years ago, pre-pandemic and now, definitely the use of cash has reduced abundantly. I rarely carry cash anymore. Although there are exceptions when you're traveling to some remote part of the country where they do not have the infrastructure or the resources or even a mobile phone to you know, use these services or use these platforms that have been given. We need to have both cash and digital payments coexisting. Many countries separate banking from mobile phones, that mobile phone operators can't offer banking services, and banks can't offer mobile phone services. Um, breaking down some of these barriers could actually provide more access to digital payments. So there's both advantages and disadvantages. In many countries, women 
are not allowed to go to banks without, say, a male chaperone. And having access on their cell phone to get banking services is very liberating. When we are talking about women enterprises in Nepal, it's quite a new advent for a country which has long struggled with sexism and racial discrimination, right? And women have been largely subjugated for a long part of the history. But now, as things are move, moving fast with globalization and taking over Nepal as well, a lot of women un- entrepreneurs and business business women are seen across the region from the creative field to adventure to banking to business to e-commerce right women have been tapping into all these dabbling into all of these sectors and it's really good to see women emerging right now with uh, changing times they are taking the lead they are taking the charge 